Good morning to you. I'm Mark Suttis, and this is What's Up in the Tropics for Monday, the 13th of June, 2022. We have an area to keep an eye on now in the Southwest and Western Caribbean. Low probability of development over the next few days, but we do want to watch this because it is hurricane season, and that is the climatologically favored area. Next, we have our areas in the Southeastern Pacific. 92E, the area in red there, and then another disturbance off to the south and east of that. Uh, part of basically that's part of the overall weather pattern that might give us development in the Southwest Caribbean. It's pretty complex, uh, but just an active pattern overall in this part of the world. You can see that too pretty clearly on the satellite imagery this morning. There's our disturbance 92E in the Southeastern Pacific, but then look across Central America, the Western Caribbean, the extreme Southeast Pacific, just a lot of clouds, showers, thunderstorms, a lot of energy down there trying to bundle up and make something of itself. We may have as many as three separate systems. Um, it could just be one, the one in the southeastern Pacific. We shall see. Nothing too threatening, though, that's for sure. Maybe some rainmakers, which is an impact. We don't want to discount that, but I don't see an intense hurricane coming out of this. Not yet. Not any uh, anything to worry about close to land anyway. All right, so looking at the vorticity signature, not much in the southwest Caribbean yet. There are our two systems in the southeastern Pacific. Neither of them uh, too rounded in appearance just yet. Still a little bit uh, elongated. When you see the energy stretched out like that, that tells us that it's not rapidly developing. So we'll just keep watching. This is a great map to do so because you can see the evolution of how that energy tries to bundle up. Looking at the guidance here for 92E, generally speaking, the consensus is for this to head out to the west, northwest, and northwest with time staying well to the south of the southern coast of Mexico, probably not even going to be an issue directly. Now, if this does become a hurricane, it could generate some swells, and that could be a problem later on. We'll, we'll address that when and if that need arises. So looking at the 6Z GFS, there's our system in the southeast Pacific 92E. It does eventually wrap up, probably becoming a hurricane briefly. Again, well to the south of the Mexican coastline, so if, you've had, if you have interest down there in the resort areas, not too much of a concern, at least from direct impacts. Now let's slide over to the western Atlantic basin. And again, this is a complex pattern, but it does try to yield a named storm. You can see that forming in the next couple of days in the western Caribbean, maybe about by day three to be more specific. And it kind of pinwheels in. There's that gyre. You can see just this turning this counterclockwise, almost like a Ferris wheel of energy pivoting around three different vorticity areas. One of them that's most prominent, that one right there, that's the one that could become our next name storm in the Atlantic. It's all going to come down to land interaction. How much does this interact with Central America if most of the energy stays over land? It'll be a big rainmaker, which again, that can be problematic all by itself, uh, but it wouldn't have a chance to become much of a wind or lower air pressure type event. Now, if any concerns about this coming to the north affecting the United States, I think you can almost forget it entirely. When you see a map like this with all that red and orange and pink over the lower 48, that indicates a huge area of high pressure, hot weather, dry weather mostly, and that is going to protect the lower 48 from anything coming up from the deep tropics down in the Caribbean. Just too much deep layer ridging Unfortunately, that's going to mean temperatures in the triple digits in a lot of these areas, but that does protect us generally from anything coming out of the Caribbean. It would be steered more towards the west and uh, towards the Yucatan and then eventually Mexico across the Bay of Campeche. All right, well, I'm traveling to Florida today in just a little while to pick up some equipment from one of my colleagues, so I won't have a hurricane outlook and discussion video today, but we will knock that out tomorrow. All right, so the Monday update will be on Tuesday. I'll be driving all day today, all right? Have a great rest of your Monday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. This has been What's Up in the Tropics. I'm Mark Sadoff. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.